So chapter 13 details all about the neoclassical perspective and then towards the end it touches upon the Phillips curve and the long run Phillips curve. And the neoclassical perspective is talking about how in the long run the business cycle is going to fluctuate around the potential or full employment level of output. YP, right, which is our potential GDP, our full employment GDP. So we have two fundamental building blocks of neoclassical economics. The first one is the fact that the potential GDP determines the economy's size. And the second one is that our wages and prices will adjust in a flexible manner such that the economy will adjust back to its potential GDP level of output. So Keynes thought we had sticky wages and prices, right? Because of the coordination argument and menu costs. Neoclassical economists dictate that wages and prices do adjust in a flexible manner so that the economy will just adjust back to the YP if only we would let it. So again, neoclassical economics about the long run. Right? And the Keynesian critique was, in the long run, we'll all be dead. Potential GDP is a theoretical concept, right? Where all it's the level of output that can be achieved when all of the resources are fully employed. All the land, all the labor, all the capital, and all the entrepreneurial activity. Right? And so one of the things that we know from our chapter in unemployment, right? Uh, chapter 8, I believe, is that unemployment rate is never going to be zero. So when we're talking about YP or full employment, right, we're really talking about uh, zero cyclical unemployment. So that means we're still going to have frictional unemployment. That unemployment that happens just when you're quitting a job or when you're leaving college and you're starting to work somewhere, right? And there's also going to be structural unemployment, that unemployment that happens when people's skills are no longer needed and desired by the market. So there is some theoretical calculation that's made for this potential GDP, and that's what economists benchmark our actual GDP to. But potential GDP is, again, it's never as if we can empirically verify that we're at potential GDP. It's a concept more than anything. So let's take a quick step back. How does potential GDP increase, right? So Keynesian economics talks about how, you know, we have to stimulate aggregate demand. We have to make sure that C plus I plus G plus NX is enough uh, given the production at the time, right? Uh, Keynesian, or, sorry, neoclassical economics focuses more on the long-run determinants of GDP growth. So we'll kind of take a, a quick aside and talk about that briefly. <laughs> 